Good evening today in the studio with an exclusive guest who has travelled all the way from London and down the street, and that is Prime Minister Dean. Hello. Uh, so, Mr Prime Minister, it seems that since you've been elected into office at the start of the month, lots of progress has been made. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, thank you. Yes, we, we've, we have begun um, this term with quite a bit of progress. I'm quite happy with it so far. We've introduced reform to the media sector in the form of giving Ofcom new disciplinary powers, as well as changing up the category where media is presented with the introduction of tabloid media, which has thrived thus far, and I'm very happy with it. I can't wait to see more covers come out of that area. Um, just last week, we've passed the Civil Service Bill, which codified uh, several part essentially codified what's already established with the civil service and gives the cabinet secretary uh, the proper authority and gives proper standing to the civil service code, which is something very important, especially uh, in this political environment. Um, we're working quite closely in Northern Ireland uh, with the executive. We've helped them set up their new Discord server, of which they'll operate out of, because before it was just utterly disorganized and just utter anguish to look at. So that's finally been solved and i congratulate them on their election there we've got progress in the moj we've gotten rid of the magistrates court and with that's part of our reforms to the criminal justice system of which there'll be plenty more to come and uh, on the foreign stage we're standing by our pledge to stand against sort of remnants of imperialist glory or imperialist or colonial countries uh, such as northern rhodesia which we stood against there. Uh, um, entry into the Commonwealth, and eventually, when they did, uh, we as a country put enough pressure for them to uh, change their colonial ways. So I think we've achieved quite a lot in government thus far. Um, I do want to accomplish a lot more, and I imagine this interview will uh, quiz me a bit about that. So yeah. Um, there's been a lot of comments regarding the Ministry of uh, Justice, and that is about the bar certification. Uh, when's that due to come back? Uh, obviously, the bar is created by the newly created Law Society. Uh, I don't have an exact ETA on that, but from the last update I had on that from, I believe, Shalix and uh, Crystal, uh, the Graffins, uh, as I like to call them, uh, because that's literally their surname, um, about it is uh, pretty much near completion now, and I wouldn't be surprised if it is released this week. Um, and then we can reopen bar certifications and allow for new barristers to come in. Right. What is your standing on the Office of Communication and its former chairman, Gustav Rhodes? Uh, obviously, with the media blackout that happened and essentially the media sector going on strike against uh, specifically Gustav Rhodes, um, this government did consult with Lynn, who was the permanent secretary to DCMS. And we spoke to Gustav and we thought it best that he would resign from the position in order to get the media sector going again and not cause any further disruption. I think that was the best decision really i had confidence in him up until that blackout it was clearly an untenable position and i'm not here to you know fire fight that doesn't need to be fought it'd just be completely unnecessary and it wouldn't do any good for the media industry so i think the action the government took or my government took was um very good uh, obviously ofcom is still uh gustav rose sorry did that in reverse uh, gustav is still on the ofcom board and that's at the discretion of sigmatic who is the new chair and I think he will do a fantastic job sort of redeeming Ofcom and using Ofcom as a proper regulatory authority over the media sector and one that can be respected um, in the near future. Brilliant. Do your confidence still remain within Ofcom? Uh, yes, I do have confidence in Ofcom still. I've pretty much revived it. I've given it new tools. I very much want to see them properly in action under Sequatic's chairmanship. Great. What is your opinion on the private sector, which it seems to be rebellious uh, with the war with Greggs, AA and RAC and the media companies going on strike? Uh, we've touched on the media companies already, uh, so I won't repeat that. But in regards to the infamous battle of Westbridge between the RAC, RAC AA and Greggs, I'd say that's pretty much in the past now. Uh, that was dealt with by uh, group administration uh, and in-game administration, or Westbridge administration pretty much. Um, that's that was pretty much outside the government's remit, really, in the disruption that was caused to the game and sort of the breach of in-game rules and whatnot. So I can't give a pro proper comment on that beyond um, I, I don't think the events should have transpired like that, really. And um, 
it is a bit saddening that it ended up with the companies being suspended for a bit, but their operations have resumed since um, a while back. So um, I don't think anything else will happen on that front. Um, what is your opinion on the recent abdication of uh, the former King Joseph? Uh, it, it's sad to see him go, really. Uh, I think a lot of people have had their criticisms of him, and that's completely fair. I've had my fair share of criticisms uh, towards the way that the monarchy is handled. Um, but he's done a lot of work in terms of development for the community at the forefront of Westbridge and the new Northminster project, which will be the next community game, hopefully later this year. So he's done a lot of work for the community, and I think that has to be acknowledged. Um, so it, it is sad to see him leave the role, but I think it'll be good to see him uh, continue uh, as the lead developer of the community and as a member of a group administration. And on that note, I welcome the ascension of uh, King George the First. Honestly, I, I'm very fond of Comentium. I think he's a great person, or Anthony Wellesley, as most people know him. Uh, I think he'll be an absolutely wonderful king. I think he'll restore sort of authority to the role. And I think he'll do an amazing job sort of reuniting this community on a level that perhaps governments can't or other individuals other than, you know, the crown, the head of state. So that would be interesting to see in the future. Mm. Uh, well, what was your relationship like with the former queen, King? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm his absolute best friend. Uh, I think that title is reserved for Conor Novak and Conor Novak only. Uh, but I've spoken to him on occasion. Uh, I think he's a great. I think he's a great lad. Um, I'm very sentimental for the Labour Party, as most people can gather. And he is a former Labour Prime Minister, and I do hold former Labour Prime Ministers to high regards. Tom Connor, they are, and Theo, they are my sort of idols, really, in terms of premiership and leadership. So, um, I, I wouldn't say I'm his best mate, but I, I, I'd say. We're friends, and I will enjoy working with him in the future. Have you spoken with the new king yet? Sorry, pardon? Have you spoken with the new king yet? I haven't had a full conversation with him, like one-on-one just yet, but um, I have been involved in sort of group discussions with him as part of the whole um, situation regarding the abdication, uh, the accession, and, of course, uh, the plans for the coronation. What do you believe your relationship with him is going to be like? in the near future I think it'll be a very good relationship because I mean you've got to have a good relationship between the king and the prime minister really in the past in this group that's been absolutely pivotal especially when we've had sort of very interventionist kings like uh, King Tom the first um, so I think a healthy relationship will be needed and I think uh, that is something that can will be provided because I'd say me and Tom, Tom uh, get along quite well fantastic now there was a magazine released uh, from the house, I believe it was produced by Ryan Heathcote. Mm-hmm. It was directly slandering uh, your hair. You lost track of elections. <laughs> what are your comments basically surrounding that? I mean, look, I I have lost my fair share of elections. I won't deny it. The first election I fought, I was in the coalition with Benny. The second became Prime Minister, the very next one, everything collapsed. The one after that, things recovered, but not to the degree I wanted it to be, because I wanted government again. And now I'm back in power. So, I mean, I'd say I've had a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest, in terms of um, elections. But I wouldn't say I'm a complete failure, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with the, the tabloid cover. And obviously, I'm not balding. I'm greying. I'm definitely greying a bit. <laughs> but I'm not going bald from this job at all. Could you um, tell us what the house means by your little child that you can't comfort? Uh, obviously, it's a tabloid to so take it with a pinch of salt. But um, no, I'm, I'm not necessarily there to comfort Gustav. I, I had my conversations with him, obviously, in regards to the whole resignation and the situation regarding Ofcom. And I'd say we're on, we're on fairly good terms. Um, again, the whole, with the whole Ofcom situation, I wish that could have gone better. I wish the media sector just didn't go on strike. But it's clear that a lot of people you know, felt that way towards Gustav's chairmanship of Ofcom. And uh, obviously that had to be addressed. And it's um, our, our job in government to address those concerns. And they were addressed.
Do you agree with uh, Gustav actions to close the media companies down? Well, the thing with Gustav is he didn't close media companies down. No media company closed down because Gustav forced them to. Uh, in regards to the Scotsman, that was an entirely separate matter related to essentially being told that some of their covers were NSFW by a group administration. And um, in regards to the media blackout, that was over concerns about Gustav's bias or whatnot. At no point did Gustav force any media companies to close down himself. There was never a vote in Ofcom to do that. There was nothing of that sort. So and Gustav ha- has never at any point forced the company to close down. Um, I can't get inside of his head. Maybe he would have wished that, but he never acted on it um, at all in, a, in any capacity in his uh, chairmanship prior. Expand a bit more on the bias. Well, well obviously, part. media companies sort of came forward, hence the media blackout, on that Gustav was being biased against, negatively, towards certain media companies like ITV. And um, I'd say that there, there is substantial proof for that bias. Um, especially in regards to the way Gustav sort of talks to members of that media company and the way he acts towards them, and that's a completely fair argument, um, which led to that loss in com- confidence and that discussion that warranted his resignation. Um, but I think th- this could have been handled way better. I don't think a strike should have happened. I don't think it should have been handled in such a- an extreme way by the media sector, but... What's done is done. What's happened has happened. And it's our job to move on from that, restore trust in Ofcom, uh, get behind Socratic, who is the new chairman, and uh, regulate the media sector in a way that everyone likes. Brilliant. Moving forward, what are your future pa- plans uh, with the United Kingdom? And how, um, what would you like to improve most in the UK? Oh, Lord, that could be a very long list. Um, I think the the one thing personal i'll get onto political shortly but the one thing personal to me about improving the uk is i really want to see those um those roll icons and i just want to see the discord server be fixed because it looks awful right now that's just personal but it's never going to happen so i won't give my hopes up about that it's not my job as prime minister to do that it's for group admins to do uh, but on a political level why do you want to change i want to introduce trade unions for the public and private sectors I do want to continue reforming the DCMS and make it a media government hub, and I want to make it the centre for organising events. I do want to get the MOJ back on its two feet. I want to reform the criminal justice system and have that repeat offences scheme that was explored a bit more deeper in our manifesto at the election. I do want to revive Northern Ireland. I think with the new executive, that is very much possible, and we are working very closely with them now uh, to ensure that Northern Ireland can be put back on its two feet. Uh, and the recent election has shown me that uh, there is a chance of the region. It, it's not a lost hope. So I'm very happy about that. And um, I think for the Home Office, our main plan is to carry out um, our reforms to ensure that there is proper oversight of the services and to ensure there is proper representation through the Police Federation and through um, public sector trade unions in the LAS and LFB. What is your... Um... Overall standing with emergency services, we'll start with London Ambulance. I would say I get along fairly well with the emergency services. Um, It is a shame that I can't play Westbridge. I would absolutely love to. I'd love to work in one of the services, whether it be the Met, the LAS or the LFB. I'd love to. Uh, so I wish I, I wish I could have that closeness with the services. But, you know, we might do what we have with what we have. Uh, but I'd say I get along fairly well. Uh, with the services and their commands uh, but one thing that always has to be remembered is I've been elected on a platform to ensure that there is accountability and oversight within the services and I do intend to carry that out um, as much as possible really Do you agree with the um, agency heads? Do you have confidence within them, with the services? I have confidence in the current emergency service heads, yes. Uh, I think Daniel is a superb commissioner and i think he's doing his best to ensure the service can sort of redeem its image especially after the um sort of the consequences of the graphen inquiry that got rid of uh commissioner raptus hellwolf i have confidence in mip i know he's recently halted his uh, reforms on the lfb and i want to work very closely to ensure that those can re-begin at some point in the future because i think that will have a positive effect on the community and i think they will have a positive impact on the lfb and for the most part 
I, I have confidence in Philip. I think he does run a good service and I think I can work constructively with him, especially on the issue of public service unions, because at the end of the day, um, the, this Labour government has been elected on some very clear ideas and it is my job to ensure that, they are, that, they, that it's carried out to the best of my ability through legislation and through policy. Yeah. There is um, a lot of talk that's been going, a lot of centralised um, Twitter activity in the HM government Twitter about foreign affairs, a lot of meetings. Well, the same three things seem to be said with every meeting, and that is development relations and events. Is actually being talked about during these meetings. That is the the general theme of meetings, really. Usually, in in public meetings like those held at Downing Street, it is typically the what's called sort of catch up meetings, which is catching up with the country, seeing what the current situation is in regards to development, domestic politics, and sort of development in regards to maybe public services or private sectors within those countries. And from there, we can then begin working out agreements in regards to, for example, uh, when we met with the Dutch, the Netherlands. Um, that led to uh, joint trainings between the Dutch arm, but between the Dutch military and the British armed forces, and I think that was a very good result from that meeting when the right consultation was done with the BAF, etc. And um, with other countries, uh, it, it is just catch up. It is making sure that we are up to date with their affairs and seeing if we need to address anything, anything of high importance or usually of very sort of sensitive material or fit stuff regarding, say, national security or uh, high-level affairs regarding the Commonwealth or stuff like that is usually done over Discord, mostly because it's so that we can keep track of it a bit more easier, more easily as opposed to doing it in-game. And because it is highly sensitive affairs, they do need to be database and they do need to be stored somewhere and they need to be remembered more easily and somewhere that they could be easily located, like um, the bilateral relations chats and so forth. Um, so... That's generally the way that foreign meetings go. I think the tweets, it gets to the core of it. It's not waffle for the sake of waffle. That gets to the core of what was discussed. And I think that that's all that needs to be done, really. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you think foreign affairs have improved since you've took office? Uh, I, I would say that there has been improvements, yes. I think we are working very constructively with new countries. I think um, one, one policy I do wish to obviously implement as part of our manifesto is to help out British overseas territories in terms of hosting events and getting general activity besides uh, British Armed Forces events, which was a concern brought by a constituent a few elections ago, and I do intend to make good on that promise. And um, I think um, the FCO is is doing good, good on the Commonwealth just generally right now. I think uh, we made our point in regards to Northern Rhodesia. We stood by our anti-imperialist, anti-colonial policy. We stood by that and we made good on it and we got a good result out of it. And I want to uphold that as much as possible uh, throughout my premiership, should it ever arise again where we see a colonial country apply because they, they, there's no space for them in the community and the UK has made that very clear. Brilliant. Well, uh, what is the very next thing that the government is going to be working on? The very next thing I'm working on this week. Yeah. Uh, honestly, my main concern this week, as I outlined in the press conference yesterday, is focusing on getting the implementation of public and private sector unions. I'm still in consultation regarding that. Um, what One thing on that front I will need to work on is communication with service executives, as well as making material as part of uh, the Treasury and so forth, to sort of inform business owners of the changes and what measures they would need to take in line with the bill, which will get a uh, royal assent um, next week as part of it being a King's Speech pledge and not being able to be uh, blocked forever by the Lords. Uh, there is one amendment I need to table on it, which would be expanding it to the LAS and the LFB, um, which I spoke about a bit earlier. But um, generally speaking, my main focus for this week is the implementation of trade unions or uh, doing the amendment, the consultations and the material to educate people on it and to tell people what the changes are. And um, the other thing that I'm definitely going to be working on quite a bit is Northern Ireland. We have seen a new executive get elected. Um, I know my Northern Ireland secretary, Scripted Sit, is already working very closely with the new executive and that is 
great. We do have quite a few pledges that we need to get through that require the executive's approval because otherwise it'd be a bit dumb, wouldn't it? So, um, yes, we are mostly focusing on the Treasury and Northern Ireland as well as the Home Office in terms of the public service unions and um, the oversight um, bill that I'm presenting. Hello, um, well, Dean, thanks for coming and thanks for this opportunity. No problem. I wish you the best of luck in your office as Prime Minister. Mm-hmm. Better.